I recently had the pleasure of visiting your studio in New York, and so today is my pleasure to welcome you here to SCAD. Thank you. It's been a wonderful, wonderful two days in Savannah. So you've been so gracious to spend hours with our students, and I'm wondering, what are students asking? Uh, really technical things, actually. Uh, I spoke a lot yesterday uh, about uh, stone cutting and the stone cutting process. Because the stones have a character. They the have stones have a character, yeah. and not only that, but uh, they have a variety of color that is mm -hmm. unimaginable, meaning uh, even if you are cutting a single stone, you cut it and it's mm -hmm. green on one side and blue on the other. And you're like, I don't get it, it's the same <laughs> stone, <laughs> you know, but that means that you have to sort it before you, you know, before you cut it so that, okay, all the green ones over here, all the blue ones so over here. So you're kind of buying unawares and then it's a surprise yeah it's a surprise <laughs> it's a surprise and sometimes you get lucky and you get more lucky than unlucky oh. and uh, this is nice about that trade mm -hmm. yeah well I was amazed that 99.9% .9 of your Ippolito gold comes from recycled sources what led you um, to that conviction in support of uh, sustainable practices uh, cutting stones really sort of brought to the fore. I mean, I've always been a, sort of a fanatic about fewer better things and really being uh, very careful with your resources. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you start to cut stones, you really know that firsthand because mm -hmm. it's a finite resource. I design in palettes, like not single colors, mm -hmm. so that I can use every shade of every of every stone. Mm -hmm. And gold is the same way. Mm -hmm. So why mine gold when there's so much gold in the world that mm -hmm. is being constantly refined? Mm -hmm. So just use refined gold. Do you find that's important to your clients? I think so, and I and I think that uh, sometimes it seems less important, but simply because they're uneducated, mm -hmm. and that the minute you educate them about it, then mm -hmm. they care about it more. Tell me a little bit about how you put your business together and all these different facets. Well, I think that we have sort of a similar story in that we had a dream, but no plan. <laughs> I had uh, a very traditional uh, art, uh, historic, and trade background. I studied sculpture in Florence. Mm -hmm. uh, so then when I moved to the United States, there's enormous opportunity here mm -hmm. and that you can do pretty much anything you want to and mm -hmm. nobody will question it. The American dream. I was looking for jewelry for women you know, like myself, meaning mm -hmm. I'm young, I'm cool, mm -hmm. but because I grew up in Italy, I'm very uh, sort of uh, fond of this idea of real jewelry, of real <laughs> materials, and, you know, fewer better things. So I was looking around, and really there wasn't anything. So uh, I just sort of dove right in and <laughs> said, okay, I think that's what I'll do. I'll do, mm -hmm. you know, the part that's missing. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first store was Bergdorf Goodman in New York. Well, that's a good start. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like uh, if you have an idea and it really belongs to you and, and you believe in it, that is more interesting to follow, even for other people who are witnessing your journey. Yes. You're influenced by many things. But really, the reason that people uh, gravitate to your work usually is because of its extremely personal nature. I really believe in the experience of touching with your hands. Yeah. And so my stores are very unique because it's fine jewelry with no cases, meaning the things are not under glass. Mm -hmm. Because so much of the experience to me is touching it. Mm -hmm. Like you learn so much by touching something. Mm -hmm. You know, if you touch it, you have an experience that is not mediated by a salesperson, by mm -hmm. anything else. And I know 100% firsthand that somebody, once they like touch it and have an experience of the product and think about it on their own, like the last question is how much does it cost? Mm -hmm. It's not the first mm -hmm. question. You've won their heart. Um, you know, business strategies are infused into our curriculum at SCAD. And I'm wondering what are some enduring business lessons that you've learned over the course of your um, fabulous career? To trust your instincts, because your instincts around your business are usually more sophisticated than you think, than you realize. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows your business like you know your business. Mm -hmm. So to not be so quick to entrust your livelihood and your business to 
other people who on paper sound like they would be better equipped, which is not to mean don't take any advice from anybody, but it just means, you know, really have the, uh, the you know, the courage to follow your, your yes. instincts. Yes, consider advice, but then yes. do what you think is best. Yes, exactly. I agree. When you first see someone after all these years, are you able, and especially I'm sure you've done trunk shows in various places, are you able to immediately envision like the perfect jewelry for that person, for their personal adornment? Usually, yes. And the thing that's uh, funny is that most people think that things are too big when they see them. You know, it's like, I say, here, try this on. Oh, no, that's too big. You know, everyone thinks that they can't carry bigger scale things. Mm -hmm. And then you put it on them and they're like, oh, I could get used to this. <laughs> okay, well, what should I be wearing? Uh, the, I think here, I think you need to try these on. Mm. So here, I'm just gonna have you try these on. Oh my. You think <laughs> yes. so? Yeah, exactly. Oh. oh, okay. I have a motto. What? Cool enough to covet, but classic enough to keep. Oh, okay, that's a good so, one. Uh, the cool enough to, to covet, covet yeah. covers the <gasps> kind of yeah. sensation. Mm -hmm. Feeling you see something and you feel like, <gasps> Yeah, mm, that has an emotional appeal to me, mm -hmm. and then instantly uh, followed by, and I can tell that I'm going to like it in ten years. Lee Belita, I am a longtime fan of your work, and um, I'm overjoyed that you're here at SCAD. Thank so, you. Thank it's you for sharing your vast knowledge with us, um, and all the time that you spent with the students. Thank you so much. It's really more precious than gold. Your time. Thank, thank you. you.